I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi and today we are doing a bit of an unusual video because we have some real life footage to react to. This is the Japanese National uh, Carcasson Championship, one of the most competitive tournaments in the world. It is arguably harder to win the Japanese Championship than it is to win the World Championship in Essen. And I'm gonna pause the video right here because I wanna comment on the opening moves a little bit. So before I do the comments, by the way, a bit of context. The player with the red meeples is Takafumi Mochizuki, whom we featured a lot in this channel. And the player with the black meeples is another very strong Japanese player, the top performing player in the World Team Carcassonne Online Championships 2022 for Japan. The 14-year-old prodigy with the screen name uh, 3106KUN, Satoru Kishino. Now, the reason why I wanted to pause here is just to show that there's a lot of subtlety even in the opening. So you see red now placed a meeple over here to start a new city and there's a reason why he placed it here and not on the other side on the left well the reason he did that because it creates an indirect threat so this square next to black city already becomes sensitive because if black were to get something like a triple city with a road then uh, then red could start a two-point road and at the same time creates a severe blocking threat to the city that Black is building. So now let's get on with the video, but we're gonna see a lot of subtle moments like this. By the way, as you can see, the players are playing with these huge tiles. I'm not sure if, if I were to do this, uh, I would find it quite hard, because it's just very difficult to see the, uh, the board. I mean, it makes it easier for us, the spectators, but like when you're playing yourself, you don't have this kind of panorama view. So now black, of course, starts a f potentially four-point or even six-point road. And red uh, finishes his city, takes four points, equalizes on the scoreboard. As you will see, uh, both uh, the score count and the tile count will be slightly behind of what's actually happening on the board. Because uh, this video is from a live stream by a Tokyo board channel. And uh, things were being updated live, and obviously there is a bit of latency here. Now, Red, of course, should continue his city and place a meeple on the second one. But the question is, where exactly do we do it? Do you do it below, over here? Or do you do it over here? And I think Red chose the wisely to do it over here, uh, because this square becomes a bit sensitive it slightly restricts what black can do and this is one of the reasons why black now made a surprising move to me instead of putting his this tile somewhere here to continue his city and he actually um, started a new city so that he could benefit both from the road part of the tile and the city part of the tile that's actually something that you see a lot uh, with the Japanese players and especially uh, the ones with the highest level they will tend to Maximize their efficiency and they will also in the opening try to build multiple cities at the same side So there is this is also an interesting moment where I'd like to pause the video a little bit. So here's what happened Red placed a four-point monastery where uh, he pre-built a three-point road and because of that Black was forced to take this road, take this three-point road over here, uh, instead of continuing some of his roads. And this is actually what you want to do, generally in a Carcassonne game, you want to make sure that your opponents need the same tiles everywhere. Now comes another interesting decision over here. It's a straight line, relatively useless tile, but red is going to extract value from it. You could make a case and you know for blocking over here, or maybe for blocking over here. But instead, red goes for value, just taking two points. And these are important two points because now, if black draws um, some kind of quick point tile, let's say a triple city with a road, then black will not be able to take two points because this road is already occupied. And now comes the first move that slightly surprised me. So if I were red, I would probably add this curve over here and drop a farmer 
uh, you do have to drop a farmer on this move for sure. But as you will see, instead of prolonging his own road, Red will actually place this curve over here in a bit. Sorry for the spoiler. I've seen this video once before. And then this creates a sensitive square over here because Red is about to start blocking it. And also, Red is actually not sacrificing this point necessarily because there are some scenarios how this road over here uh, loops back and takes this fragment. And now comes the first move that I do not quite fully agree with Black. So Black now drew a great tile, a monastery, and he has to meeple it. And there are multiple five-point spots. So this is a spot which Black took. Uh, there was also a spot over here, which was five points next to a city. And there's a spot over here. Out of these three spots, I think this one was the most advantageous because Black uh, could have pre-built a three-point road and have got an extra value from that. Now Red is in an excellent position with this monastery because he's controlling two meeples. So now Black cannot develop his monastery without adding a point to Red's monastery and also Black cannot develop his city without adding a point to Red's monastery. So this meeple will be freeloading from the opponents to other meeples. Now comes an interesting moment. So Black resolves the dilemma of these two sensitive squares by completing his road first and indirectly continuing his city. Even though this square now becomes a little bit vulnerable with an attack from above, like with a straight road, there's still a, a sufficient number of tiles to finish his city. And Red now getting a lot of good fortune here, drawing another monastery, and uh, this is an excellent six point spot. Even though Black is leading on the board, Red is in a much better position. And this is a moment worth pausing. Why this move is so important. If you see, this is the last Red Meeple deployed on board, so Red hasn't got any more meeples in hand. It is sometimes counterintuitive to do so, but this is exactly the kind of spot where you gotta deploy your last meeple. First of all, six points is just a lot of points and you gotta take opportunities in scoring them. Second, Red has these two cities, and with any city cap, Red can get his points back. However, when deploying your last meeple, there's sometimes another problem. You tend to lose value from tiles that you can't use. So for example, if red draws a triple T crossroads, then red will not be able to score two points over here. But that's about the only tile that red loses value for. Any city tiles red will use over here. Any road tiles red will just uh, use next to his monasteries. So red is in fact the favorite to first of all get one of his meeples back and then at some point get a T-shaped crossroads to not lose value from these two points. Now let's continue over here. And I think Black is now about to make a move which I do not agree with. So Black has two cities open, or one over here and one over here, and it would be nice to complete them. Otherwise, the investment of these tiles is just not as profitable. And as you see, another table is being added to this scene because Black is um, starting a third city. And this is the case where I think Black is spreading a bit too thin. Sure, the idea was to put pressure on these two monasteries at the same time. But the thing is, there's still plenty of road tiles remaining and it's all and it's not quite difficult to defend. And you see, so now Black got a city cap again. And in fact, Black already could have finished this city over here and gotten 10 or 12 points, depending on whether this tile contains a shield or not, because it's not possible to see from here. Now, another interesting moment. So you see, Black is considering building up a city, which is what I would do. I would probably just add this over here or over here just to try and get that meeple back and to double the points. But Black is about to do something quite unusual. So Black completes a nine point monastery and starts a new city. Now the purpose of this move is that when Black finishes this city, then Black will drop a farmer, try to connect through here to the farm, which is quite logical. There is a problem though that this square becomes too sensitive and in some scenarios actually both of these meeples get trapped 
versus this one minus from Yipple. So it is quite risky. Now we see reds starting a double attack. One is making it much harder to complete this city because at this point I believe there are only two tiles remaining that fit in that hole and also starting an attack on this city over here looking to either block or to connect. Now black completes now the first part of his plan. He basically equalizes the field because it's quite obvious that black will connect here eventually because there are just too many curves and crossroads left and also black still has um non-zero chances to connect over here and now comes i think the most fascinating move of the game so you see red has a triangle city tile in hand and you can see how red almost came here and thought about finishing his monastery which i think would be a good move what else could red do red could uh continue it over here and maybe either try to connect or just face it the other way, face it leftwards, try to make it a bit harder to complete Black City over here. But now Red is about to do something that wasn't even on my radar, but I think it's just... Well, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, just, just wait for it. Well, the camera doesn't quite show it, but we'll see it in just a second. Do you see over here, right there at the bottom? Red just started a new city out of nowhere. And I think that's the brilliancy here, because Red was banking on the idea that there were still seven triangles remaining, and Red just chose to build yet another new cities in order to have multiple cities open, spread his opponent thin, and make sure that his opponent is not able to attack all of these cities. Now, this is quite a logical move that Black's about to make, so this tile goes over here, obviously. But what I like to see here is that Black is not putting it here automatically. Actually, Black is considering alternatives. So you see, he thinks about maybe finishing his city, and then eventually he decides on the correct move, just trying to build a city over here. There's still plenty of triangles. This will be worth at least 10 points. And with this move, Black creates an important threat. He creates a threat to put a triangle over here. and then to connect, which is why it's very important that red prevents this idea. So red could have uh, done many things with this uh, curve. Red could have finished his monastery. Red could have saved his other monastery and meeple the road, but instead red is spending yet another meeple and also trying to build a four point road, but most importantly, eliminating a field connection opportunity. It's usually a very dangerous threat when your opponent is threatening to complete his city and drop a farmer at the same time. So it's something that you probably should try to react as quickly as possible, ideally on your very next move. Now comes a move that I do not fully agree with, but it ends up working out. So Black uses the Monastery tile to try and block Red. The reason why I'm not such a fan of this move is because it's easily defensible. If you take, I don't know, a T-shaped crossroads and put it over here, then this vulnerable square is not as vulnerable and becomes protected. Probably if I were Black, I would just add one more Monastery points to myself and then bring my Monastery one step closer to completion. In the meantime, we can see almost off screen how the bottom city is being developed and getting closer and closer to completion. Also, just look at that. Sakafumi chooses not to save his meeple, but instead get one meeple back. Uh, he's saying, you know what? If you want to spend the tile on adding one more point to me and fully blocking this guy, then go ahead and do it. So it seems that it was important for Red to have more meeples in hand because Red is actually also threatening to complete this city and drop a field meeple, which is why Red will patiently wait for a city cap over here. Now we can see this city being developed. Takafumi counting, even using his finger, the number of triangles remaining. And now this city is basically unblockable and will be worth at least 12 points. So. Just this move over here to randomly start a new city in the middle of the game when you had a city open will actually be quite profitable. Now Black in the meantime completes his plan of blocking Red's Monastery over here. So nothing will fit in this hole. And most importantly, it creates a field connection opportunity that Black is willing to use. 
huge move over here by Red trying to thwart Black from completing his city. It's quite a standard tactic where giving your opponent a couple of points is fully justified because now instead of needing one tile to complete the city, Black needs one, two, three tiles to complete a city at the very least and it makes it much less likely that this city will be completed. Now it looks that a lot in this game can be decided by the field fights and you already can see black. Actually, maybe you can't. Yeah, because probably my face is covering it. But anyway, I can see, you can't, how black is about to connect to the field. And he was actually like holding the tile with the meeple already in hand, already visualizing where he's going to put it on the field. So he's clearly going to connect. There is just a bit of subtleties involved how exactly going to turn it. And you see he decided to turn it in such a way that would minimize opportunities for reconnecting. Now this connection is fairly secure. There are plenty of road tiles remaining. There are still curves, there are still straight lines, there are still T-shaped crossroads. So this will likely be completed. And now red, of course, will need to reconnect because it looks like it will not possible to win this game without at least tying for the field. Now, Red has a bit of a dilemma here. Red could get his meeple back and indirectly continue his city, putting a triangle over here. The problem is that there are not that many triangles remaining because four triangles have been spent on that area and there are already four more triangles in play. So this would make it harder to complete this city. Now, you will see how he's walking around and considering. So he's considering starting a blocking attack. He's considering placing it over here, which is a legit move. And you can drop a farmer after this because there's still four crossroads remaining to connect through this space over here. And you could definitely drop a little, I don't know how we could draw a meeple, ah, meeple on that tile and try to connect. Uh, but he thinks better of it because this move really begs for a city cap. Uh, so he will wait for a city cap as he should. This is also something quite important in Carcassonne is that you gotta have patience. You gotta wait for the right tile. Like if you see a city tile, you shouldn't always add it to your city. Maybe you should put it somewhere else and then add a better tile to your city. So Red almost continue his city. He wants to do this. He wants to drop a farmer over here with the risk that this guy is getting blocked, but he thinks better of it. And eventually settles on this move. So what this does is that it creates two favorable scenarios for red. Either this square is getting blocked and um, red will have a points majority in this midi battle, eight monastery points versus four city points, or Red could actually f continue Black's city with a triangle and then have his meeple out, but the uh, Black meeple trapped. And this is something that is happening. We see that Black just took four points for this road, which he had to. But then when this triangle comes over here, and I believe there will be a triangle that comes in over here, it will be very difficult for Black to continue his city. And remember I told earlier Black had the opportunity to get his meeple back and double the points. Now it looks like it will be another ruin and Black will end up with two ruins and potentially a meeple shortage. In the meantime, you see how important patience was because now red completed a monumental move both getting an eight point for the city and creating a field connection dropping a farmer equalizing this farm potentially and also being able to connect with tempo because there are still curves remaining and red can place a curve over here get four points for his road and get a meeple back now an interesting tile again so black creates yet another threat by continuing his city he's about to drop a city cap over here get his city for i believe 12 or even 14 points and drop a farmer which red cannot allow to happen so whichever tile red got is that a road is that a city i don't know we know that it is going to go over here or over here just because the threat of black completing this city and dropping a farmer is so severe that we have to do something about it and 
That was the power of Black's play here. This move forced Red to invest to Meeple and equalize the city. As you see, Black continues his monastery and leaves this empty. Whoever draws a city cap first is likely to take this city and take six points. Now we are about to see what I think is one of the best moves in the game. See if you can find it. We can see Takafumi calculating something, but soon enough he will reveal the tile that he has, and then I will ask you to pause the video. Can you see the tile from here? Well, maybe you can, but anyway, the tile is the T-shaped crossroads. Now, what do you do with a T-shaped crossroads in this position if you are red? There we go, you look at that. So it's, it's a move that doesn't add any points, and it actually foregoes the opportunity to take a two-point road over here. So instead, red creates a dual-purpose move. First of all, it actually eliminates this field connection opportunity on the left. So now, black isn't able to take the six-point, or isn't able to drop a farmer. Now he instead has to take four points and create another less lucrative field connection opportunity because both of these connection squares will be somewhat restricted. But the second value in this move is that it puts pressure on this connection square and black hasn't been very lucky in drawing roads and black really does need road and suddenly there aren't too many tiles remaining that fit here and if black does not complete this connection black just loses. If red draws a starting tile he can block this space leaving it impossible to connect. And look at that, Black, by drawing the city cap, was not able to find a tile that gives him an adequate defense, and Red did draw a city with a road. He's now considering simply completing a city connection over here. But you and I, we know what Red is going to do eventually. It must like, be a bit of a psychological an advantage, like your opponent just hovering over the move that says annoying to you, and you know he's about to make that, and you may be hoping that, oh no, please change your mind, please change your mind, but he does not change his mind, and this block is now complete. There is now only one tile remaining to fit in here, so in order to have any chance at winning this game, Black now must win a coin flip. Black now thinking about his win condition, so he's behind on the scoreboard and he's behind on the farm. He has to hope that he's gonna have his field connection over here. And Black decides to say YOLO and to connect over here as well. So now Black is hoping for two things. He's hoping for a starting tile, so city cap with a straight line over here. And he's hoping for a regular straight line over here. Black is banking on two unique tiles, which puts him at 25%. But then, when you're behind, like, beggars can't be choosers, can they? And also, even if Black just takes one connection, let's say if he takes, if he loses this, and he takes this, this straight line, he can connect over here, he'll have his meeple back from the monastery, and maybe he can hope to connect through here as well. But whoever drops a farmer in the top left corner, will be subjecting the self themselves to a great risk because there aren't just too many tiles left that are suitable over here. Unfortunately for Black, Black doesn't have any meeples, so he has to just play a move that doesn't give him any points. Actually, it makes it slightly harder to block this square, right? So he finds this bit of value, but it doesn't matter in the end because you see this tile over here. This is what Black needed over here to connect, and Red won the coin flip, and now it is impossible to win for Black. And in fact, red won 
both coin flips, which will not only secure them the win, but will do so with a big point difference. Reds deploys his last meeple for a three-point field because it's the last move. The only thing that black can do is just add one point to his city. And now they're going to shake hands and count the points. We'll look at the process a little bit. So one thing about the counting the points that I like that they do in Japan, you will see how they will just remove tied meeples without adding them to the point count. So these two monasteries, any shared features, uh, and then you see you have four points over here and four points over here. So these are also removed without adding them to the total. It just captured the spirit that the Carcassonne is a zero-sum game. So it doesn't matter how many points you score. It only matters if you score more points than your opponent. Of course, for this, uh, they have to count because it's a city that is owned well, a city of ruin that is owned only by black. A city that actually could have been completed on multiple occasions. And I think if there's anything that lost black the game, it was it was it was this, right? And if there's anything in particular that one read the game, it was that city with four triangles completed at the bottom. You could say that Red won because of his big field. But actually it's not entirely true. Red won because he was able to establish a lead on the scoreboard by scoring aggressively, building all these cities and monasteries and little roads. And this forced Black into risking and trying to win with an unlikely scenario um, which would allow him to take over the big field. Had the point difference been a bit less, Black could have elected a more secure win condition. But because Red found a way to build that 14-point city and other ways how to expand his lead, he forced Black into taking more risk than Black would have liked to. That said, I think both players played extremely well. We could see a lot of deep thought, both in the time that they spent on the moves, although you don't know that because I've been kind of doing skipping and stuff, but believe me, like towards the end, some of them spent like full three minutes, uh, especially when we're looking at these field connections at the end. So now we see the award ceremony over here and the second place player. We can think about what lessons we can learn from this game. And I'd say it's pretty simple. Lesson one, score aggressively at the start of the game. Lesson two, try to build multiple cities to spread your opponent thin. Because if you build multiple cities in the early stages of the game, at the same time your opponent is not able to attack all of them. And here we see the fifth time Japanese champion, Takafumi Machizuki, being awarded his gold medal and probably a trip to the world championship, which will happen this October in Essen. And lesson three, actually I don't know if we need a lesson three, Two lessons from this game is enough. And of course, you can watch the full game with Japanese commentary. The link to that will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.